Hi, and welcome to the first episode of Inspire. Here we want to highlight key members of the FGC and try to explore the synergy between them and their character of choice. We'll be getting to know their thoughts, philosophies, and strategies in fighting games. In this video, it's our great pleasure to have Jinel Carter, aka Cuddlecore, going over Elisa Bosconovich in Tekken 7. Hey everyone, my name is Gnail Carter, or Cuddlecore as I know in the gaming community. I'm a professional Tekken 7 player for Equinox Gaming. For about six years, I've been competing, but for the last year and a half, I've been a full-time professional player. In that last year and a half, I have been traveling nationally and internationally. Because of this and all the exposure I've gotten because of it, I have become a notable name in the gaming community and the Tekken community as well. I've become notable for my tournament placements, my tournament performances, but all of that is the case because of my play style. My play style is known to be very energetic, dynamic. It creates a lot of chaos. And as Tasty Steve says, she likes to keep it close. And when I keep my opponents close, I don't want them to leave me at all. You're not leaving my sight. I, I love my chainsaws as well, which is another way I like to keep people very close to me. So my play style is definitely noticeable. You know when you see it. However, with that in mind, I definitely am always looking to evolve and progress with my playstyle. Because though I am known for my playstyle, I know there's still things that can always help me in growing to become the, the full-fledged full strong player that I want to be. Another thing I've learned with Tekken is there's always so many different ways to approach the game. With this time of me going against all these different types of players, there's, I learned that there's a thousand ways to, to approach and play this game. There are things about my character that I'm still learning because of how other people play her. And that's something I've learned with going to tons of tournaments as well. So you learn that there's not just one way to think about the game. And there's not just one way to play any character in Tekken. And that's something that I've always praised about the game. So with the discussion that I will be having with you all today, Maybe I can open you all's eyes to some things about the character that maybe you didn't know as well. Why Elisa is my main is because originally in Tekken 6, Xiaoyu and Lily were two of the characters I was maining at the time. But Elisa was new to the Tekken roster and she presented this challenge for me. Elisa was, her aesthetic was graceful, long limbs, just she, she reminded me of a ballerina, really, with this destructive stance, with chainsaws and flying and jetpacks. That was exciting to me, but she was so different than Xiaoyu. Xiaoyu had this move list that was like 140 to 170 moves, right? And Elisa had like about 64 to 70 moves. Xiaoyu, for me, was a character where I was able to freestyle a lot of my offense and defense because of how massive her move list was, but with Elisa, it was completely different. I wanted the challenge because I wanted to see how creative I could become with such a limited move list like Elisa's. And though it took me a couple of months because of getting the hang of switching from playing this very free-flowing character to this character that really was more compact, I definitely did adjust to it. Playing Elisa has taught me a lot about defense and fundamentals in Tekken because of her poking and spacing and then with punishment alone. So I'm so glad that I picked up the character as a challenge for myself and ended up falling in love with the character this whole time. So now that I've talked about how Elisa became my main, I like to talk about Elisa's strengths and what makes her such a well-rounded character. So for Elisa's strengths, I believe what makes her so strong is her range, her whip punishment, her movement, and her stances. So Elisa's range. Some of her pokes in regards to range are so strong. So moves like back one, some of my favorite, one of my favorite moves, back one. I love back one. On hit, it's plus eight. And it also leaves her in crouch for a little bit if you don't hold, if you don't hold down or down back. So this is one of those moves where if your opponent tries to challenge, if you do 
back one, you can take advantage of that because you are plus on hit. So you do back one, maybe you'll do a wall, right, a wall rising four, or maybe you'll do back one into a wall rising one plus two because opponents do like to duck against Elisa when she starts doing another option, which is her crouching down forward one plus two. So it's the mix up between the low or the mid. So Elisa doing a mix up like back one. Is there a crouch or back one? Slightly in crouch, ball rising one plus two. Or back one, crouching down for one plus two. Or back one, ball rising four. Back one, ball rising two. Or maybe just doing back one, staying in crouch. The great thing is, from back one, she has all these mix ups and these options, and she can condition her opponent like this. The range on back one is about two. 2.08, but you two, two, range two. Another one of Elisa's great range pokes is her down back three, which has the same sort of property in regards to like that crouching animation as her back one. So down back three can leave you in crouch if you hold down back or down, as I stated, also about back one, but also with down back three, it's the same thing. I don't even, I'm already kind of crouching, so I'm able to do something from, from crouch into a wall rising move. So I could do down back three into wall rising two. Down back three into wall rising one plus two. Down back three into wall rising four. Down back three into maybe a crouch. Down four, or one plus two. She has all these options, but just down back three into nothing. Another one of Elisa's long range pokes and one of my favorites is her down forward four. Now, Elisa's down forward four is, it is plus four on hit, and it's quite linear. However, the move is great in the sense that it stops opponents from approaching you maybe more in a, in a more aggressive manner. Maybe they're like coming in very quickly on you. Down forward four is one of those moves that can really snuff out your opponent if they're moving a little too quickly in uh, to your space. So I will set Kazuya kind of just dash in. Okay, and then I will press play. And it kind of hits her a pretty nice, pretty nice range. Kind of hits from range like 1 point, maybe 1.7, 1.8. So it's pretty nice for that. Good keep out. It's plus four. And it's, it's, it's steppable though. It's, it's definitely steppable. That's why I kind of recommend more so that if, you're, if your opponent is approaching you and you know they're always usually stepping towards you instead of around you, it's, it's a great move for that, for that uh, simple keep out. But I will show the opponent's capability to step it as well. So I could do... Maybe it's Kazuya, I'll do. I'll do is down for one and step. Me two and step. And I'll use Elisa's down forward forward to respond and we'll see how he's able to step. So you see that um, depending on how quickly he stepped right after doing a move determined if my down forward four would hit right away or if his step would cause my down forward four to evade. So I'll create another situation. I like this one a lot. Um, just like down forward one step. Up for one. Comfort one and a step. Down for one. 
And then I try to retaliate with down four four. Down four one. You see how he's able to step? Pretty pretty convincingly. Because like I said, down forward four is linear. So depending on if you can see like how quickly your opponent is sidestepping, maybe after they do a move or after you're doing a move, or if you just see a pattern in their movement when they're stepping or walking in general, it's important to recognize that so that you're not finding your down four four stepped. But more so maybe if you see that they are kind of delaying, like they'll wait a second, then they'll step, then kind of test them with that too. And of course, the move is great against opponents who duck. So say maybe you have conditioned your opponent a lot with lows and they're starting to get just overwhelmed by lows and they're like, okay, I need to start blocking low. But obviously the moment they duck low or they, they try and duck and they try and block the low, you know what th this down forward four does? It's a mid. It is a mid. So you're pretty much saying, hey, this is going to be my mid check. It's gonna stop you from ducking. It's your, it's the duck check. See how much they're ducking, how much they're twit ducking. <laughs> so yes, down forward four. Down forward four is great against opponents who are approaching you more so linear, just going straight towards you. Maybe even if they're trying to wave dash in your face. I do say be more cautious though with using down forward four against opponents who step quickly after maybe certain moves or if they're seeing your pattern on where you're using down forward four, uh, because like I said, it is linear and you can't get stepped and launched. So be careful with that. And if you're going to try and commit to using down forward four as a way to deal with an opponent who's stepping, see if they're stepping right away or if they're kind of slowly delaying, like waiting, and then they're stepping. Down forward four, like I said, is a great way to check people who are ducking. So I will set Kazuya to duck or crouch. So he's just crouching now, right? So when I hit that down forward one, he's ducking. And he's ducking for a pretty long time. So like I said, it's a great way to keep, keep your point in check. It's plus four on hit. Maybe then you like to take another turn and do something after that. It's the acknowledgement that you see that you're, you're telling your opponent, hey, I see you're ducking. I have a down forward four for you. I set Kazuya to step right originally. So now I'll set him stepping to the left and also show what I was discussing earlier about how if an opponent steps me right away, my down forward four misses. But if my opponent is stepping and not blocking afterwards, I can do down forward four and it can potentially hit them after they step. That's one one and then I do down forward four. And that is that my down forward four is missing, right? It's whipping. But if I wait for him to step first, if I have a read on his timing, so though my down forward four is blocked, it's actually hitting him compared to it whipping, my down forward four whipping and potentially getting launched for it. Now I will also show, I, I will record him doing one one and then stepping but not blocking. One, one, step, hit. Because not every opponent is going to step and block. Some opponents just step and they don't commit to a block. So if you see those kinds of things in their movements, those kinds of patterns in their movement, you can exploit that and definitely you definitely use the down forward four as a way to keep them in check. Again, telling them like, hey, I see you're not blocking after you're stepping. I'm going to capitalize on punishing you for that. Also, one other thing I think is great about Elise's down forward four poke, not just about the range, but what it can do in general against certain characters is down forward four can lock down bigs. And I think that is phenomenal. So I'm going to simple select 
And I am going to pick... Oh, that was a big character. Jack, sure. Jack. Let's go Jack. Because, you know, Jack's big. But Gigas. Gigas is, is great, too. You know, yeah. We'll, we'll go Jack. <laughs> okay, we'll do Jack 7. So Lisa versus Jack 7. A classic matchup. Battle of the Robots, right? So I'm going to apply the same concept. Down 4 4 is great against characters big characters that also cannot step. Now, Ganryu might be a little different, but we're not applying him to this right now. So, say if I want to do, like, I'll do a one jab and then, oh, oh. I'll do a one jab as Jack and then try and step. Or, um, I will also set another, I'll set him to do two one and then try and step. He can't step at all because he's too big. His step is very different. He takes up a lot more space in that regards to the uh, to when he steps compared to other characters because he is uh, a larger frame character. But you know, his feet are, are different too. But up here, shoulders wise, when he steps, my move is hitting for sure. Two one. Step, not working. And I will now show Jack trying to step to the right, just to double confirm for you all that that is what's happening here. Two, jab this way. Two, my down forward four is, it is hitting him every single time. And even if the Jack player jab steps, blocks, uh, it's still keeping him locked down. Hmm. Or Jack can actually step that to the left. Wow, okay, maybe Jack can step that to the left. To the right, to the right. That is to the right. Jack is stepping her to the right, but to the left, he can't step her. Jab, but my down forward four is hitting him this way. Hmm. It's hitting every single time. Even if I do two step block, it should work if I am, um, if he's stepping to the left. Let's see. Yeah, that's still, even though he's blocking, it's still hitting him. But I guess to the right, which is something new I just learned, depending on the character, some of them, I guess, can step. At least it's down forward four to the right, which is interesting. I did not know that. Okay, that maybe that's just a Jack thing. Let's try Gigas. Let's try Gigas. Because I think Gigas might be a little bigger than Jack slightly. Let's see though. Okay, well, we create the same situation. Maybe we'll just do a jab. We'll do a jab into a, a jab into a step. But I mean, he is a little slower, it seems. Jab, step. Let me set it again. Jab, step. Okay, let's see if her down forward four connects with him when he steps to the right. Yeah, Gigas might be a little slower on that step to the to the right, so potentially you know, that's probably why he can't really um he can't do anything after that. And yeah, he must be slower stepping that way. But then, okay, since that is the case, if we're doing a two jab and then stepping left, the same thing should apply then to what happened when Jack stepped left. He we, he blocked it, but you know it's still connected with him. Or he stepped and the down four four hit him. Yeah, this down four four is hitting all the way. Interesting. So Jack can sidestep Elisa's down forward four to the right. Gigas cannot step Elisa's down forward four to the left or the right. So this move will be great against Gigas and great against Jack if the Jack player is stepping to the left. Now, you know, Elisa's weak side 
it is her left, stepping her to the left. So that's great. And that works perfectly. Let's go to simple select and let's try against maybe we will try Ganryu this time. I have this feeling that Ganryu will be one of those characters that will be able to step my down forward forward to the right. Let's, let's try. So we will do like a one jab and step. Yeah, that's that's looking like it already. Look at how fast he is. Yep. Okay, let's see. Okay, the one jab, step. Yes, all right. Yes, he is. He's perfectly capable of stepping my down forward four to the right. Which, you know, which I'm not fully surprised because Gamu does have he does have good movement for a big, a bigger character. But I will now set it for him to jab once and then step to the left and see what happens. Jab once, step. Okay, let's see. Difference. It's hitting him. Okay. Hmm. Well, it did hit him the first time, but it's because I think I delayed my down forward four. Ganryu is definitely one of the more bigger characters that can actually step Elisa's down forward four to the, to the left and the right, it seems. And maybe that's because, uh, you know, he has the kind of movement that an average, an average frame character has like an average size character like maybe because he has the same kind of movement that they do because I definitely have seen that and experienced that by um, for playing against the character not that shocking but Ganryu was one of the only bigs who can do that it seems who can step Elisa's down forward for both ways Jack is one of the bigs who can step Elisa's down forward for to the right not to the left though so if if a Jack player is trying to maybe like step her a bit more to the left anyway, that down forward four will be great since for a lot of people, they do know her weak side is the left side step left. So if you're stepping, if they're stepping that way, your down forward four will be a great tool against Jack in that kind of matchup. And Ganryu, like I said, he can step her down forward four easily. Both sides. Gigas, he's kind of slow when it comes to when he's stepping both ways. So you can lock him down with down forward four as well. Now, another big I'm gonna check out is Panda. Panda or Akuma, I, I, I will do Panda. Just curious to, just curious to know about it. And maybe this will help you all, which I'm very sure it will for, for the tools you wanna use to lock down opponents, especially opponents who do vary in size. Okay, we'll do record. Then we'll do a two. We'll do a two jab and then walk. Looks like Panda's a little quick too. Like she could possibly step as well. Let's see. Two, step. All right. Two jab, step. Yeah, she's able to to that side. Okay. And then we will record Panda doing a two jab and then stepping to the, to the left. Okay, let's see what happens now. All right, so that's catching her that way. That's definitely catching her that way. And so yeah, so down forward four in itself, it is a move that tracks to the left, but it doesn't track to the right. And for certain big characters, they can't step it at all. And it's looking like Gigas might be the only big character that can't step it either way. And all the other like characters in general, they, well, the bigger characters, they can step it to the, to the right, but they can't step it to the left. Now I will do simple select and just to make sure I'm, I'm right on this, I'll go back to Kazuya to double confirm what I'm saying. Because this is what it's looking like to me and what I've, I've learned over the past couple of years about this move. You know, the pros and cons of it. All right, so 
I'll have Kazuya do one one and step left. One one. Yeah, he's able to step it left. I'll do it one more time. One one. Yep, he's able to evade that to the left. But, and also to the right, I believe, as well. So we're gonna do one one step to the right. One one. Yeah, he's able to evade the down forward four from both the left and, and the right. But for big characters, with the exception of Gigas, the big characters can step down forward four to the right, but they cannot step down forward four to the left. Now with Ganryu, he has like a regular, like average size, like body it seems, even though he seems bigger, he's able to step that move uh, to the left and the right, just like I just displayed with Ka Kazuya here. So now you know the ins and outs, pros and cons of this move. So now that we've talked about Elisa's range as one of her strengths, I, I also want to talk about her whiff punishment. Elisa's whiff punishment has to be some of the best whiff punishment in the game. So some of Elisa's whiff punishment consists of her back 4-4, four, four, which when it's put into a combo with 64 damage. One, two, one, two, plus four, and then 64 damage. And with the wall is even more damage. And then other potential opportunities there too. And back four, four, being a natural combo is perfect. You don't have to take up from anything. If the, if the first back four hits, the second four will hit. Another one of Elisa's great whip punishers is her forward three, two. It is a 14 frame launcher and it puts her in chainsaw stance. So there's a couple of different options from forward three two. You have forward three two, maybe you go into three or fly three, which I know some people do. So it kind of leaves you close to them. Maybe if they don't get up, you do another combo. There's forward three two into four four two one, and so they're kind of still close to you. So you can maybe do some more chainsaw mix-ups from this as well. Then there's just forward three two and maybe you want to do a power crush so there's a lot of options from that forward three two then one of her one of her other whip punishers is even just, it has great range as well and, and in the same kind of respect as forward three two but this move is, is launch punishable it's a little riskier but i still include it because i think it's very strong i've been incorporating it a lot more lately in my gameplay back three plus four back three plus four is great for crushing lows it has pretty nice range it's about like range two 2.5 like 2.2 2.5 2 so i record kazia doing maybe down for one to a to a low. Down for one, down back four. Okay. So say if I have a read of my opponent, and I know that they go for that, then I can use that as a punisher. Be a little closer. So there we have it. That pretty simple, nice with uh, with punisher. It covers a nice amount of range. Can miss sometimes, so it gotta be a little close, but overall it covers like ranges 2, 2.2. Right outside the range. Very, very strong with Punisher. And it gives a nice combo as well. Another one of Elisa's with Punishers is her up forward 4-4. Four, four. Her up forward 4-4 four, four does not have the best range at times, but kind of in that close range, in a closer range, like maybe, maybe 1.8. It, I personally like to do up forward compared to up. Up forward brings Elisa forward a little bit more. So I use that in regards to whip punishing because if I'm trying to whip punish, I want to bring her closer to, to the opponent so that I can whip punish instead of going up. I want to go forward. So I personally recommend that you do up forward 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 instead of just up four. Because there is a difference. There's up four and then you notice how she goes forward a little bit more. When she, when I do up four, 
leaves her at leaves her at it kind of in a, the same range. But when I do up forward four, it brings her to three. It brings her down a range. So that's important to remember. So I'll have Kazuya do maybe like a closer range, like with with a little bit of range on it. Just create the situation of he whizzed down back two from like a, a shorter range. She, I did up forward four, four, four instead. And I was able to punish him. Now if I did up, I, when I did up, I completely missed him. I will also set the command history so you all can see this. I did up right there. When he whipped that down back to, I did up and I missed him. Now I'm gonna do up forward four four and use this with Punisher instead. Because I did up forward four four, it hit him because I I projected her forward instead of having her stay in one place. So with these with Punishers, they're all very strong. Gives Elisa great damage. Gives her some good mix-up opportunities. Some good Oki opportunities too. So, yeah, her whip punishment. Some of the best whip punishment in the game. And and it can even um even the distance of those those whip punishers is pretty good. It, it's they're pretty decent in carrying to the wall too. Be at range like maybe three or like before and they'll fly in and they'll want to do something but she can be walked which I would like to show a little bit of I will switch to Kazuya and I will now be going against Alison So I will create a situation where I'll have her, I'll have her do her fly mix-ups from a very far distance. I'll do fly two, I'll do fly one, two. And now I'm going to show what happens when you, when Elisa does fly from a long distance. I'm able to walk it. But that did catch. And you see how when when it's closer, it can be a little bit harder. If if I delay my step even by a little bit and I do and I do fly closer, it can be pretty tough. And for further away, it's even easier to walk. But up close up close it's Definitely more difficult. But he can step. You can step some. But if you're even a little late stepping, she will catch you. So, Elisa's strengths like her range, her whip punishment, her movement, and her stances all make her a very well rounded tournament character that she is, and she's even a great beginner character for those reasons too. You're given all the tools to soar with the character, you just have to learn how to apply them correctly. So now with Elisa's strengths, I will discuss her weaknesses too. So now that I've talked about Elisa's strengths, I'd like to discuss her weaknesses now too. I know, funny right? She actually has weaknesses, but she actually does. and. Her weaknesses come in the form of having very straightforward offense and sometimes struggling at ranges zero to one against opponents that are quicker than her. So straightforward offense. I know I talked about this a little bit, but things like her moves like her back one, her down forward four, her down back three are all like moves that Elisa players will go to in her wall rising one plus two. Like they're like these, a lot of those options leave her in crouch, which from crouch, 
though she does have advantage at certain times, depending on the move, opponents can challenge her. So her being a crouch does leave her at a risk, which with her with some of the limited pokes that she had that she does have, um, though they're very strong pokes, they're very straightforward. Like that's what her chainsaws and her her different stances are for to really break up that poke pattern that can happen. Like doing back one into wall rising four is not always the best idea depending on the character or if the opponent is very aware of the situation or maybe doing back one into anything can be very dangerous depending on the character and how quick they are but if i go to simple select then i switch from law or i switch from elisa to law and then I do elisa i'll show Kind of what happens to Elisa when she had that straightforward kind of offense going. And also show what happens in regards to one of Elisa's other weaknesses, which is struggling with that range zero to one kind of offense and her getting away from it. Depending on how quick the character is, it, she can really struggle. Like characters uh, like Law, Master Raven can. Can definitely they can stay on her steve even they, they, they can stay on her and since some of her options are slower than theirs at times challenging her opponent can get her, get her counter hit which i've been on the receiving end of and it's not pretty in those situations usually lisa has she has to uh, block a lot more so i'll record maybe i'll do down back three it's while rising four so maybe down back three, while rising four. So down back three. Right away, right there. At least I did down back three to do while rising four. I got one too. And if that was a wall, that would be a wall splat. And law has all those options to really just deal with her. His four as well, his one, two, three, his four. So with characters that have those kinds of tools that can really keep her in check, especially for kind of going for the Elisa back one into other setups or a, a move puts her in crouch and so she goes for other setups. So they can they can challenge her with their fours or maybe their jabs are quicker than hers in those situations. And so she really has to mix up what she does to be creative with what you do. So you don't fall into that poking pattern and get counter hit for being a little too predictable. Even, even moves like Elisa's forward two. Her forward two is another. It's it's another kind of poke, like a jab, that it breaks up the pattern very easily. The forward two can also turn into chainsaw stance, which is nice. Like maybe you maybe you want to step with it. And then you get a one after. But she has tons of different options. And the forward two breaks up that, that pattern of the one one or jabs. The forward two can also catch opponents stepping at times. So has a little has a nice little bit of range too. So it's not a bad option whatsoever. Now up close. I will set Law to be the opponent again. Because I do think that Elisa can struggle against him. Moves like his forward one plus two, it's down forward two. So it's like that move in particular can really lock Elisa down. Though she can step it. If if the opponent steps with you and then does steps with you and then does four one plus two, you're just gonna you have to block or, or really pick and choose your spots where you want to challenge. It was like his down back three that or quick plus four plus four on, on hit. That's a nice bit of range on it. Four one plus two. It keeps her in check. It's four. So if he tries to punish with anything, depending, even a power crush should be risky right here. A four 
would be a great option for him. Or one, two, three, even. So I will set him to do those. Four, one plus two went to four. So I'll try to respond. I cannot attack. The best option will be stepping. But trying to challenge Law, especially given that I'm using Lisa and I'm not as fast as him. And I'm, I'm better off just stepping. So I have stated that Elisa's offense can be very straightforward and that sometimes she can struggle at range of zero to one. But along with mentioning those weaknesses, I think one slight weakness that she also has is her um is her stepping. Like, like her stepping is a is a pro, right? It's 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 a it's a it's not a con, it's a pro, but sometimes when you know us Elisa players, we get a little too step happy we step a little too much right we're stepping way too much to the left to the right whichever way it is and and if certain characters that our opponents are using have great like homing moves that deal with uh at least the players that step a lot it can really put you in a tight situation so i set law to do his back four his back four is back four is 14 frames it's pretty nice range. Um, let's see, it kind of reaches from like range, I'll say. Like range. Hmm. About range two. Tip range is like two, I believe. So I'm going to set law to do back four. Back four, back four. And it, when she's up close like this, Elisa backdashing can be a little much because he is covering that range that she's trying to backdash out of. But as you can see, the further out she is, the more it'll whiff. And you have more than enough time to punish him. But staying outside of that range is the very important thing. Because like I said, up close, I, I feel like she struggles with that zero to one range kind of ordeal. I will set Law to also do back four and then jab. Back four, then jab. So say he does back four and then jabs. At least you're outside the range of him doing other potential follow-ups. If you're outside the range of the, of the back four, it helps with that as well. Or she can also step. But I do advise, if you feel like the law player is throwing out a lot of that homing with that back four, back dashing and getting out of the range of it will be key. Or maybe if you know that he's jabbing or doing certain moves, after you can sometimes challenge with four, especially against jabs. So, no, that is one of uh, another one of Elisa's weaknesses with homing moves, especially uh, if they're not that bad of a speed or and do good on range too. She can't struggle with it. But she can also backdash um, out of those options. Sometimes it's better to backdash than to step, which I think people should definitely keep in mind, especially as an Elisa player too. My thoughts and philosophies on Tekken have definitely changed since I became a pro player. Before I, I honestly, was playing casually and it was it was exciting and of course I always want to get better but I never really truly thought of how I wanted to get better until I started competing full time and so for myself the philosophies I generated are when you play 
recognize that you're not always going to meet your goal. And when you do, always look to improve and, and to, to have an even higher goal. I think it's, I think for competitive players, it's never enough to accomplish one goal. You want more and you want more and you want more. So keep on striving to be a better version of yourself. Okay, so you, maybe you place top eight this time. Okay, go for top two, then take it. And if you don't meet that goal, it's okay. So then when that happens, reevaluate your game plan. See what happened during those matches. Always look at your matches. Always analyze what happened during those matches. Because you know, if you were in a tournament, there's going to be VODs. And I know a lot of players feel this vulnerability when you when you're watching your matches and, and, and you're and you're losing and you're reliving it. And for us to relive that, it's it's, it's traumatic. I think because it, it shows that we are flawed and we aren't this perfect player the way we want to be or maybe the way we see it. So if that is the case, I say it's always important to have a a friend or like a training partner watch with you because they'll also see things that maybe you didn't see while you were in the match. That's very important. And for and for the flaws that you're looking to correct, never forget to appreciate the the good moments, the great decision making that you had during those games because that's important too. It's not just about what you did wrong. You have to remember there are things about your play style that make you unique, that makes you stand out from maybe someone else who's that character. Everybody plays their character so different. And and that doesn't mean that it's just, oh yeah, I did this wrong, I did this wrong, I did this wrong. Remember that there is so much good, even in the bad or the or the more negative. And then those good things that you learn that you did during those games, you take that and you improve on that as well so that you can strengthen those positive traits of your play style so that you can use it for next time. So definitely with the bad, always incorporate the good so that you're not too hard on yourself, which is another thing that I definitely have a philosophy on is it's okay to be driven. It's okay to be hungry for more, especially when you're trying to grow in this scene, especially when you're competitive as a player. But don't be angry to yourself to the point where it's like you're angry at yourself and you're resentful that you made this decision here, you did this here, you were nervous here. Instead of getting angry and resentful, seek advice. Reach out to people, uh, to players that you respect. There's so many pl players that will give their insight into how they got to where they are. And I've been on the receiving end of that where I've asked, hey, how did you do with nerves or how did you improve your gameplay? And I've gotten so much advice that it's, it helped my gameplay overall and it's still helping me today. So with the philosophies that I do have in regards to checking in with seeing your flaws and accepting that you have them, always remember that you have positive traits about your play style as well and improve on those too and not to be angry or resentful at some of the decisions that you made, but, but to become hungry and determined to become better than the player you were in the previous tournament. And don't forget, smile, enjoy, have fun. Yes, this game is competitive. Yes, it can bring out some very scary traits in you that you probably didn't know about, especially when you're put in stressful situations like competing. But remember, there's so much joy and pride and excitement and adrenaline that is born experiencing these tournaments and, and, and growing and seeing your improvement. Thank you very much for watching part one of Cuddlecore's breakdown on Elisa and Tekken. In part two, she'll be going over Elisa's pokes and stances. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to check out Cuddlecore's YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please consider supporting this channel over on Patreon. Take care, everyone. Have a good day, and see you next time. I'm
Tschüss.